and welcome back to Animation 201 with me, your host, Pixie Pew. And um, we're in for some good times. This is the last episode of the season. I thought that we would have some fun ways to close it out. There's more than one way to practice animation, so that's totally what we're going to be doing today. Welcome, easy, present. Should I get my little note board out? I need to be like, okay, <clears throat> easy, yep. Oliver, mm-hmm. Josie, mm-hmm. <laughs> Welcome on in. How are you lot doing? I hope you're doing amazingly well today, and I hope you're ready to learn some some fun things that, ironically, me and Easy have been doing recently. So, all the fun stuff, all the time, all over the place. Woohoo! Um, but yes, Josie, Oliver, Easy, welcome, welcome on in. I might have some interesting things coming up later, 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 as it is. The end of the season but we'll sprinkle some interesting thoughts in here you're here yay benny hello oliver last one yes but don't worry i've got some good news you may indeed <coughs> graduate again oh that's right something's happening something's happening don't worry there's more clint welcome on in hello voodoo val you made it yes okay that means i can continue Penny's present, Val's present, Clint's present. The checkboard has been checked. Okie dokie. So today, throughout the Animation 101 and 201 series, we've been learning how to animate from the ground up in After Effects and Adobe Animate, which is really, really cool because we've all been able to learn and grow together. However, if this is the first time that you've come to Animation 201, you're not really sure where to start. We do have a link of all the lessons we've done down below but today is slightly different we're going to be looking at ways that we can practice animation and the ways that we're going to practice them is great for beginners too it allows you to warm your way in kind of de-scarifies the process because once you see it moving with the guaranteed eight steps i feel like it kind of makes you more encouraged to do more graduating from pixies hard nuts yeah Oh snap, yeah! <laughs> Don't worry, Penny. I see easy there. Voodoo Val, I hope you're doing well today. Okay, so, as always, we always have a couple of what's. We're going to be doing a 360 today and thumbnail-ing. So, of course, what number one? What is 360? 360 is an animated turnaround. This is perfect for letting you see your character or creature at a glance it also allows you to dust off the cobwebs just in case you feel like you need a bit of chance to get in there we can do this in eight keyframes the front the three quarter the side the back quarter and the back everything on the other side is actually just a duplicated flipped version of it so if we take a quick look at what this looks like in a standard way with the head at the top and a non-standard way at the bottom we can see that even if we don't fully follow the system we're still able to get a kind of moving animation remember six seven and eight are the flipped versions of uh five four and three okay 360 makes perfect sense what about thumbnailing hmm what is thumbnailing thumbnailing is making a tiny rough gestural sketch and all animations normally goes alongside storyboarding and this is great for poses timing and feedback so this means instead of you having to animate a whole thing and do all the clothing you can see what it would look like before you get in too deep so let's take a look at this let's say we've sketched a bunch of ideas we've got i don't know a dance pose somebody putting something on their head and we're like oh, okay i think i want this one in the bottom left here cool if we take these little thumbnails that we've drawn, we can actually animate them and change the timing and the spacing. That way we can see what the animation would look like and if it's moving the way that we want it to move before we put too much work into it. That's actually pretty cool. Hmm. So what's the class project for today? Hmm. Today we've got Showcase and Thumbelina. Uma, welcome on in. Proxy, Mike, and Paolo, welcome on in. 
this is your call to action time for you to go ahead and grab the mini games we do have homework we have fun homework our homework is mini games woohoo voodoo val just posted the link there and if you're watching this in the uh in the vod don't forget it's also in the description too <laughs> reverb like linda blair's head in that old movie the exorcist i mean yes and as always, we do have a wonderful student's work from the last lesson that we did, which was on morphing and switching. Penny Doodles, well done on doing your morphing and switching. I didn't get to do my homework. Don't worry, Easy. I expect, <clears throat> I expect to see your homework for uh, <coughs> this one. Thank you. <coughs> <laughs> but yes, this is our call to grab our mini game. Stretch the fingers. And I feel some of you might have it by now. So once you open your project, we will get started. <laughs> I failed you. No, easy. You have it. You have it. I know what it's like when you've got lots and lots of things on the list. I'm really grateful for those of you that have been able to send me in some of your animations. It's been really, really cool to see. And hopefully the mini games and the lessons have been able to show you something cool or something new that you could do to take your animations a step further. Penny said Easy was helping me with my homework, to be honest. He gets a gold star too. Oh, you do? Okay. I don't have any stickers near me. Okay. Gold star. There you go. There. It's plastered. There you go, Easy. Good job. Good job. Helping others is always good. Right. So... We've got our first mini game to do. So I think you've all got your stuff by now. Number one, showcase. Ba 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 ba. The kitty goes right round, kitty right round. Looking adorable, round, 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 round. So once you've gotten your file, it should look something like this if it doesn't and it shows a different screen head on up to the top left near this it's not the ace of spades i'm not sure why i'm thinking that near this symbol someone will tell me what it is i'm thinking of cards go up there to where it might say thumbelina if it does click on the drop down box and select showcase on showcase ah for those that don't know in animation 201 101 maybe 301 ooh, we like to do a mixture of After Effects and Adobe Animate. So the mini game file, that's your background file, if we turn off the eyeball, is actually a Adobe After Effects file, which I actually animated in a frame by frame way instead of using it the normal way. It's really nice once you get the gist of the animation, you're able to put it in pretty much uh, either program to get a really nice marriage going on. Hmm. The Ace of Clubs. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Mike. So if you press the enter button, you'll see a little looping animation. This is the example of the animation that I did before. I do have another one that I will show you because I don't think this one's on the one you have. Bear in mind, if you're doing a complicated character, you might have to do multiple layers just to make sure that all of their pieces stay where it needs to go and it might be a little bit easier to animate from there on. So if we take a little gander through this before we create something to turn around, we've got the picture file, which I think I removed from the project. So we don't need this one anymore. I'll delete the layer. So we've got the ears, we've got the tail, the paws, the head and the body. So as before, we've got our front picture, three quarter, the side should be back quarter, the back, and then these ones would be the flipped versions. What we will do before we get started is we'll draw that little circle that we had in the what screen earlier. That way we can double check that we've got the right angles for things. But I do have a nice little helpful thing for you anyway as we're actually able to layer or label our layers. So you might have noticed some of these say something on them. 
It says half, flip seven, flip five, and flip three. These are related to the layers themselves that should have a duplicated version. So this is our middle layer. One, two, three, four. Ah, this is five, right? This is halfway. When it says flip seven, if you take a look over here, we're on actually level, wait, 11 frame. This is the frame 11. So we just go back and find frame seven and we'll be able to copy this and flip it around and then do our thing. Sweet baby. <laughs> oh, hello, sweet darling. Oh, pal. Emma, good to see you. Penny the class rep. Absolutely. All righty. So let's hide our example. Let's hide the cat. For some reason, I really want to do a milk carton today. But of course, if you have any suggestions, please let me know. And in the waiting, I've got two things in my mind to do before we go over to Thumbelina. We'll make a new layer. Actually, I'm going to make a group, which you can totally do as well, just to tidy things up because I've left these layers here for you. We'll grab a hold of them, pop them in the folder. I'm going to layer it. Never mind. So we don't have to look. Oh, Val said, picks a very important question. Does the cat like me? Yes. The music's gone. Yes. The cat loves you. The cat's technically with you right now. You just don't know. So the next time you see a cat walking through the street, that's the cat. That's the cat. Mm. <laughs> what? Mike? <laughs> no, no, no. As a, as a cat owner, I can tell you right now, this cat loves you. Let me go fish out my... My cat is. Okay, so we've got our new layer. We're gonna call it ref. And I'm gonna pick a blue. You can pick any color you like. And we're just going to draw something on the other side. Now, if you're drawing on the outside of the main window and you notice that you can't actually see what you've done, check up here. If this is activated, it will clip the stage. So that means it will hide everything that's on the side, which is really, really good if you like to leave lots of notes for yourself, which we're absolutely gonna take advantage of. So if this is our circle, it's huge. Let me grab this with the Q, make it a little bit smaller. The pause after you read my question made me nervous. Does the cat like you? Silence, yes. <laughs> what I need is like, I needed to make my screen bigger, but I need another, I need another, layer to make sure that it doesn't repeat the <laughs> the intro screen the way i've set up these macros okay so we've got one two three four five and we know that these ones are the duplicated ones if you do want to change the size of your brush without going over to the right hand side all you have to do is click the bracket. One bracket on the left makes it smaller. The other bracket on the right makes it a little bit bigger. So we need to do number one first. And I think I'm going to do Mr. Keyframe. Why don't we close it out the way that we started all this. Technically, Mr. Keyframe is yellow. So that means it's going to blend in with the background. So we're actually going to use outlines, which I don't normally do. <laughs> I don't normally do. To be honest, Val, after we made that cat in that last one, that cat that we made in the Firefly Club Masterclass, that's the cat. That is the cat. He loves everybody, especially Val. Okay. So I've made another layer. Here's something very cool that we can do to make the process a little bit faster. So we always have to make new frames for each new image. Hold on, let me make sure this is not where I put the stuff. No, it's not. Okay, phew. Move the ref to the top. I'm going to lock it down. When you make a new layer, it tends to not have anything on it. Completely blank, but we're doing this two by two. We have to do it two by two because that is the speed that I made the turntable be at. So if we want to match this quite easily without having to go through, press F6, press F6. All we have to do is click on one of the layers, go up to convert to frame by frame, and every other frame. Now it's done it for us. 
Yeah. Spontaneous. Welcome on in. Thank you so much for coming over. Okie dokie. So, as a reference point, actually, this is really good for doing characters as well. Mr. Keyframe is a diamond with gigantic anime eyebrows. He does actually have a hat, but I don't normally draw it if it's too complicated. And he's got these little eyes. He doesn't have a mouth. He's just all eyebrows. Eyebrow gang gang. And unimpressed eyes. <laughs> That's Mr. Keyframe. So now I've got him over there. I can remember what he looks like when we get to the other parts, like turning him sideways. That's where it's going to get a little bit interesting. So I'm going to name this Mr. K. I'm going to say OK. I should really say don't show again because it's going to do it often. I've got my key set. We know this is number one. Two, three, four, five. So if we start with the body first. Now, here's why I say, OK, doing different layers might be helpful, because if we do the body, all of the body, then we could do another layer, do all of the eyebrows, do another layer, do all of the da, all of the da, all of the da. You can totally do it on one layer, but let's say that you wanted to go into after effects afterwards and add like a composite on top of it that's where you get all those cool textures on top of the thing it might be easier if you don't want the texture to be on everything if the images are separated that means you kind of have a little bit more control so you don't have to but you can if you want to okay so the first picture is in the front it's moved a little bit. We know it's the three quarter one. Let's turn on our onion skin. I think um, it's quite a nice challenge when you have to, it's like you have to force yourself to think of a shape in a different way. I remember when we were doing um, the star that we had that jumped around from one spot, one spot into the middle spot. Originally, it was Mr. Keyframe for the example, and he jumped. And I realized I have no idea what a diamond looks like <laughs> in that position. So doing stuff like this kind of stretches you a little bit, which is really cool. So I can go back and forth. Looks good. Now, since it's only turning 360 and the character in the middle of the podium isn't actually moving, we know that we've got one point that should be the same, which is probably the floor, AKA this bit. Everything else is gonna rotate, but the main parts kind of kind of stay the same. Welcome, Jack. Oh, I should have done a donut spinning, like a standing donut. Okay, so we've done the front, we've done the three quarter. Now we need to do the side. We can probably tweak the three quarter a little bit more because the side's gonna be like proper side on which means that it's kind of going to look like this. And I feel like, I don't think we can do that. I think we could actually do that. We could. The eyebrows will be thick enough to be seen sideways, but not the body, not the body. So we could totally leave it like this. Go back, take a look, see how it goes. So this is going to be the back three quarter, a donut, a donut. So we need to turn the other way now. I might extend my doodad. It's kind of the same shape, actually. Ah, so, oh, excuse me. You did not draw my other line. I'm sure uh, the line that I drew before was the good one. Hold on. <laughs> it took my good line from me. Hold on a second. Uh, oh, okay. All right. Okay. All right. All right. All right. All right. All right. Okay. Okay. It's all good. I'm here for whatever we're doing. Donuts or otherwise. Yay. Thanks, Jack. We're doing a 360 turnaround and we're doing it off Mr. Keyframe, who is a flat diamond who has gigantic eyebrows. So the turnaround of the body alone is kind of going to look the same. But when we add the eyebrows and the eyes, then we'll be able to tell, oh, this is not the front. <laughs> This is the back. The eyebrows aren't on here. Okay, so we've got our front, our three quarter, our side, back three quarter. And now we need our back, which looks exactly like the front. So we could totally take this, copy it and paste it. But I'm not gonna, 
just in case people recognize the shape. Oh my God, those eyebrows. I see it now, yeah! Them thick brows, yes. You know, I need my, after um, we started doing Animation 101 in the very beginning, um, and I characterized the the symbols that we have, the keyframe and the bezier, and then they turn into characters. And I was like, oh, you know, he, Mr. Keyframe used to have a hat, like a detective. And I think the eyebrows were still there. And I was like, you know what? Do you love, do you love the gigantic anime eyebrows? Let me, let me put them brows on there. So we've got this. I think the front needs to be a little bit wider so we can just go in without me having to actually do anything different and turn it again. Looks like it's in the same place. Let's tidy this up a little bit. Now, here comes the part where we flip this over. Remember these ones, which is not, that's the eraser. This one, these ones are all the flipped ones. We don't actually have to animate or draw anything ever again, unless your character is asymmetrical. Which mine kind of is, because the eyebrows on the front and the back and the front and the back. So... Here, we can see it says flip number seven. So let's go to frame seven, grab our doodad, right click, copy frame, and paste frame. You can make sure that it's not moved it. Sometimes it does move its position. Okay, cool, looking good. We can press Q or go up to the top left, click your transform tool, control T, and the transform window will appear. If you don't see it, it's probably jumped to the top right. And then all you have to do is click this button over here. Yay! Let's go to number five. So this way, well, hold on. Five is it? <laughs> I don't think we really need to flip this one. There's nothing happening. It's completely a flat, it's a straight line. It really is a straight line. I think, I think it's fine. <laughs> and number three. Okay. Let's grab that. Copy that, Roger, and paste. Make sure that it's not moved position. Sometimes it has the tendency to, if we press enter, they were always up to shenanigans, what the, um, them eyebrows? If we press enter, oh, oh, it's like it's, it's like it, oh my gosh. Okay, for all my gamers in the chat, do you remember like when they put the floppy disk on its side? like in a video game when it's saving and it twirls. This is that, oh my gosh. But there are eyebrows and things that we need to add on. This is actually pretty cool. <gasps> you know what it's like when you're working and it's like, you know, you expect how it's gonna come out, but when you see it, it's like, oh. Okay, so we've got Mr. K. I'm gonna add them brows. Them brows, them brows, them brows. Where are my brows? They're over here, hello. Let's make our space again. We right click and go to convert to frame by frame every other frame that's right we're making the computer work for us yes oh my god yeah loading gif see you know what i mean yes so really if we just like did this you know okay for everyone in my age range that's the back of the floppy disk you know when you would pull it out just to see what it was even though we didn't really know at least i didn't but you did it anyway because you could yeah okay so this is the front Put them brows on there. Look at them brows. Look at them brows. We'll fill this in as well because you see through. I could really just copy the other eyebrow. Why am I? She's, oh, oh, oh. Let me lock down the other layer. Let me lock down the other layer. Oh, I drew it on the wrong layer. And that's why, that is why you lock the layers before you work. Cause you don't know. The what, Oliver, please. Oliver. You heard me. <laughs> you heard me. I'm holding shift to make sure the lines are straight. If you draw just a little bit before you hold them, you have a little bit more control over which direction it's going in. Oh no, no sticky keys. No, 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 no. Okay, there we go. We've got the brows on the start. Hi, Alessandra. And... I might start to color them in as well, actually. So one trick that we learned before 
is to use this side area as your uh, like a painter when you have all those paints on the easel thingamabob and you're like yeah yeah that's what you're doing this this is our easel look at that the paint 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 that's our easel okay there and mr keyframe has a certain amount of colors so i'm gonna pop them over here sunglasses not the sunglasses failing to pretend i'm not old enough look oliver we've spoken about some stuff i know <laughs> i know you can't get away with it here okay so my little easel my easel has this color it also has black on it he doesn't have his hat if he did it would be red but he doesn't have the hat because we're not animating that we're choosing not to but this way you can absolutely go up to window head to swatches and you can make your own swatch you can import your own swatches which is really really good but i found when you're working and you kind of want to work quickly instead of you having to open that up all the time when you have to click on this and then you gotta close that and then you gotta look underneath and find a thing instead of that just draw all of your colors and stuff on the side that way you can press i for the eyedropper and grab your colors really really fast so i've got my color here i'm gonna press k and paint inside the brow okay so we've got the front now i'm going to copy this one these two are the same oh wait hold on we don't need a front this is a okay we'll just have to go we'll just have to go i'm in the last round of moving oh oh my goodness alessandra make sure you take a break get some water please that's that's a lot of work oh make sure we don't lose our color of the eyes and it's three quarter oops i changed the size of my brush so i don't know that adobe animate actually has a way of saving your brush size so if you do change the size quite often what could be good is if on this side you're leaving notes maybe leave a note of what size you're using for the brush that way it doesn't matter what you do you'll remember what it is size for cake imagine you know those things where it's like oh my gosh this is secretly cake like this could be a cakey like an absolutely delicious a delicious mr keyframe delicious three i could probably add the eyes to this one i think there we go boop, boop. sideways we're gonna make the brows stick off a little bit so we can tell that there's something there oh okay so the reason why i'm not able to use the paint bucket is there's no back it needs a cordoned off area to paint in oh yes alessandra yes so i could either paint with a proper color like we're using at the moment or Make sure you've got your brush selected, head over to brush mode and go to paint behind. If I turn off these, I'll select the color that I intend to use. And this way it's not, it doesn't really seem like a proper barrier, but we can paint inside of it. So it's not covering my outline. I'm still able to paint within it, but I just needed a little way to make a forced barrier for it to allow the paint bucket to work cool so we can turn our onion skin back on turn the back half back on and make sure you turn your brush mode back to normal unless you still need it that way and three quarter on the back wrong color I feel like for all of the project hello those brows are bigger than they were before i feel like for all of the projects that i do in the future after learning this it just seems like such a fun way to it gets you raring to go you're like oh look the character's animated i can do this and then you you know you want to do more so the other idea i had of something to animate was actually a milk carton I feel like once you do one of these and you're like oh it works you just do it with lots of random stuff so i was thinking of doing it with an apple a milk carton probably anything i can find a shoe 
Okay, so the brow is technically this brow. So I'm going to cheat. I'm going to copy this. Paste it here. And then we're just going to cut off the bits that shouldn't be seen. <gasps> Wait. Is it a birthday? Let me get this. Happy birthday, hun. Oh, you might have cut off too much. Hold on. Let's go back a bit. We can zoom in. I don't know why I'm so far away. Okay, there we go. Make sure that it looks like it's behind. What we could do as well, instead of doing all this, if I actually made another layer and put that... Let's just do that. Make another layer or duplicate this layer. I'm going to get rid of everything else. And I'm just going to put it underneath. <laughs> And get rid of this one so now because it still kind of works like photoshop and all the other programs that have layers if there's a layer on top of it it will hide the other stuff makes it really really easy for us it'll be good practice so many things right oh my goodness imagine your little acorn or you know that um so penny our very own penny was on delta tango mike's arts battle stream and Penny drew this adorable looking character of which, of course, I'm saying animate, animate. Like you could totally do a 360 of that character too. There's so many things, so many things. Okay, we're getting a bit too precious with this. Hold on, zoom the stage. Is that the same size? Yes, it is good. Making salmon. Okay, wait, 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 wait. So when are you going to add the salmon to the turntable? Love to see it animated. I'm thinking rotatable sushi. Rotisserie chicken. Mm. This has made this animation so, so easy for me to understand. Oh, really? Yes. Perfect. I was thinking like, okay, if, if you're starting out with animation and everything else seems kind of daunting in the beginning, this, considering it's only eight steps, only eight steps oh this is the duplicated one flip seven seven and we only actually have to draw five things you only draw five images and the other ones are just flipped ones beautiful paste grab it transform it move it okay number five this is five Oh my gosh, the options are endless, right? <gasps> the sushi, the sushi. Paste it, flip it. Why do I sound like, you know that thing? I don't think we have it in England, but in America it's like flip it, bop it. It sounds like this. Seriously, Pixie, I have actually tried to do exactly this. Oh no, really? A few times in the last couple of months and no. Oh no, okay. Um, I would like to see the receipt, Proxy, yes. I feel like I can do it now. Yeah, I just needed a 201 stream. Hey, well, I'm really glad that we could facilitate, that I could help with everything. Not me helping Val. The goals, the goals. I actually feel helpful now. Thank you. Twist it. See, you know what I mean? Val is so empowered. Fail it. Wait, wait, what do you mean fail it? Retry it. <laughs> well, you know what? That is kind of a really good um, portrayal of life, right? None of us came out walking straight away. I don't know how long it took us to walk, but it wasn't day one, I'll tell you that. Um, And that would be it. Control zero. Let's take a look. <gasps> ah! Oh my gosh. So, um, this, I am not a fan of how it's poking up like this, but this, this is working. This is working. We're just going to slap them eyes on him and then we'll walk away. We'll walk away so we can do Thumbelina. But yeah, Val, it would be super duper cool to see what 360 animation you do. What was it of, by the way? Was it a human, an animal, an object? Okay. I'm actually going to do the eyes on this layer and then we'll... Oh, no, I won't. The only reason why I won't is just in case I end up painting on top of it. So I'll make another layer. Call it eye. 
because the S will make it take too long. He kind of looks unamused at everything, so there he is. I'm not even gonna, oh, let me make sure that we don't accidentally draw on the wrong stuff. Let me make sure we put our automatic frames in. We wanna work smarter, not harder. We'll just copy and paste the eyes, move them into place. I want to do a magical, oh yes, oh my goodness. Yes, 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 yes. That sounds great. So you can have like a wand or a cauldron or something spinning around. Welcome there. Welcome on in. We're just closing this one up now, adding some eyes. Otherwise, without the eyes, it kind of looks like a statue. Got the three quarter ting. So you can absolutely add more uh, frames than just the eight, but the eight alone kind of does the job. Yeah, cool. It's sideways. We could say, oh, look, little blob for where I could be. And then nothing on the back, nothing on the back. This is why stuff like this is cool because we don't really have to do too much. Number seven, there's nothing. So we know this one, copy the frames, not this one, this one over here. Paste that down. Ah, but yes, what was I saying? So yeah, so Val, you can totally add more frames than just eight if you want to, but the eight would probably work really well. And then if you wanted to have like a little spiral of like magic dust going up, um, have we done something like that? We've not necessarily done the dots animation but it'll be a mixture of the timing and spacing. I'd say this is on twos. Your turnaround will be on twos, but your magic will be on ones. And as soon as I finish this, I will show you what I mean. And this is flip number three, number three, copy this, paste it. That's the wrong thing, Pixie. This, copy that, paste it, flip it. There we go. Can you paint inside shapes in animate? Yes, you can actually. So how I've been teaching us thus far, we don't actually, ah, we don't actually make them into shapes. We've been kind of using the bare bones. Um, but when you are painting, if you go over here and select object drawing mode, I think that's what turns it into a shape. And then you're able to go in shapes kind of allow you to animate within a a group of its own while keeping everything really nice and clean and then you could import it back to the main group which i hope we'll be able to look at later it is possible clint it is absolutely possible so let's say val you've got your spinning object on the top let me just quickly color in the body with this color Boop. Turn off this, we don't need it anymore. There's nothing there. There you go, there you go, there you go. Cool. So let's say we've got, you've gone to my Discord? <laughs> Thank you, Proxy. So you've got your 360 turnaround going on, great, but you wanna have like some magical stuff coming out. I can't remember how to turn it into a shape, but Clint, you absolutely can. So let's say instead of me copying and duplicating this all the time, I'd be able to grab all of these. I cannot remember where it is, but you can turn this into one shape of its own and then duplicate that shape a few times, which is probably what Val will do. And you'd have a, another layer, but this one would probably be done on ones. You can mix and match, but I'm gonna say ones for now and let's say we have a dot that starts here oh let's have a guide actually g we'll have a guide let's say we want it to go there go around and go out i'm just going to do f5 to make sure it covers the whole way we'll have another layer let's do this really really quickly do every frame we can always make it a one or a twofer but now i've got my guide let's say it starts there 
the next one might go have it be a a smear so i want it to go really really fast over here goes there moves here moves here maybe it goes really fast again goes there oh that's two on the same one the let's have it move a bit slowly to make things move slowly just put them close together have another smear maybe cool but it can't be longer than the main animation because if it is let's say right now our g layer is too long nothing else is on the g layer technically so it's kind of weird so we'll just pull it in a little bit make sure everybody's good which it is we can hide the g layer and let's get rid of these as well because it is set to loop if your animation isn't already set to loop go up to control go to loop playback or if you want to loop a specific area without doing the whole thing go over here to loop and then you can pick your looping destination okay so now i've got something sort of going around it's easier if you do dots so you know the timing and spacing which kind of leads us to the thumbelina part but you'll be able to add more motion and more razzmatazz and more effects and such onto it once you know sort of oh how fast should it go is this going in the right place are the things too far apart like for instance that one it's just because it's kind of hard to see where it goes to but yes you'll be able to add on something else to add more sparkles to your magical item afterwards okay so we've done one we've done the 360 not bad got a little bit of time left that means it's down for number two thumbelina so in our thumbelina example we've got another kitty cat it's technically the same kitty cat let's be honest it's the kitty cat that loves wow so we're back if you haven't switched your work over make sure you go to the very top left of your screen click on the drop down box and you'll see thumbelina go ahead and click on this one so the thumbelina one also makes animation less daunting turns it back into a flip book so we've got a very small space i have done this on purpose because i know sometimes we're like oh yeah thumbnail huge drawing no you've got a very very tiny space to work in so your animation should fit in that tiny little box over there <laughs> cat in the hat yes i mean if i if i get some recommendations let me know i only thought of things with a 360 i didn't think of things for the other one but this is a great space for us to do some miniature thumbnails of anything really so I'm going to say this is the ref. This is not the main layer that we're working with, but I will have a brighter color. Oh, maybe white would be good for this one. Well, actually, no, because if we use the thumbnails we make and put it over here, we won't be able to see it. So pick a good color. Color that will be easy to see on the paper. I don't want it. Oh, no, we do actually have the swatch wheel. I'm kind of going for the blue again, you know. I don't really know Cat in the Hat that well. But if we were to do a sketch, let me say this is six pixels. I'm going to lower this a bit for the sake of the thumbnail. Let's say we've got six and we've got four. And normally, if you had a storyboard, you would have a piece of paper or a file that has a bunch of squares on it and you do a drawing there a drawing there a drawing there to explain what's happening technically we are doing that but we're doing it with really expressive gestures so my interpretation of a cat in the hat because i i don't really know it would be okay let's say i had a hat and then i don't know the hat got squashed or something 
or the hat went down in a way. And then uh -uh. when things go down, they get wider. We could probably take it a step further. So we're not really being too precious about what it looks like. It's more about does the gist come across? Will the animation work? Does it make sense? I'm going to press Q. So thankfully, because we're on a computer, we can kind of use it to help us along, especially if we were a bit too tentative in doing a particular, whoops, doing a particular picture. It's going to make this a little bit wider. So we've got normal hat. It's going down, fully squished. And I'm going to say, I don't know, maybe the hat's. all the way up I don't know about that well I guess it could I think I want like a, a straight brimmed hat even though it's going up down up boom so we're gonna have it rest cowboy hat we could do a cowboy hat maybe after this one I'm gonna make it even smaller because thumbnail should be actually smaller than what we've done so we've got it going down, boom. Maybe we can have it do a kind of smear type thing. Have it go back to this one. Or maybe we should draw it again because it's not supposed to be precious. So it's just hit the ground, it'll be wide again. Oh, uh, uh. Let's say it probably goes up once more. And now maybe there's a cat underneath it. I have no idea what this is going to look like, you know. Then there's a cat. Do Probably needs to be a little bit taller than it so it can settle. We need our overshoot. And the settle, which would be the last pose. Which. Need to make a little bit of a difference between them. So at the moment, it's kind of hard to tell. And this one. At some point I did that, but I don't know when. Not too precious about it, thankfully. If we have to, we'll just draw it again. So if you do end up with some weird inconsistencies or oddities while you're working, don't worry, it's only a thumbnail. It's all good. Right, so we've got our stuff. We've got a thumbnail. We want to see what it looks like all together. Cool. Technically, this is all supposed to happen on the same spot. So I'd probably make a new layer or I could just duplicate the reference layer. Actually, I'll duplicate the reference layer. I'm just going to move this one over because it's sort of in the way. There we go. And I'll hide one. We've got our reference copy. We're nearing the end of the stream, so hopefully this comes together quite cutely. We'll grab everything that we've just done. And we'll move it over to the main part of our piece, which is this bit here. We don't need this one anymore. So we'll take this and we'll do it on twos. So I'm going to convert it every other frame. And I'm actually just going to copy. Oh, I don't have to. Cool. I'm just going to use the Q key to select everything and delete everything I don't need. And now if we turn on the onion skin, make sure it only shows the back part. I'm actually just going to move them into place so they fit on top of each other. 
This way we can make sure that they're moving the way they should move. Good. We don't need this. We don't need that. But this way, if you did want an animation where, I don't know, a hat bounced and a cat appeared out of it, you'd be able to check, okay, is this a good shape? Does this work? Is this spacing good? We're going for twos for now, but some of this might work better on a one, which we'll find out briefly. This is supposed to go up. Next. As we're making our way through, looks like it's a smear. Thank you, Val. If you haven't grabbed your mini games yet, please go ahead and grab them. Perfect chance for you to practice your skills. The smear is supposed to be halfway in between both of these. So I'm just going to move this a little bit. Make sure that it actually fits. Halfway between both. We've got a down, but it's not an exaggerated down. Let's extend our onion skin again, just so we can see where the real floor is supposed to be. If we drew a guide that told us where the floor was, that would be helpful. But when you're doing your thumbnails, have an idea in mind first. That way you'll know what you need to prepare when you are actually animating. Cool. We're almost done. We've only got one left. Pull in our onion skin. Move this down a bit. Great. And last one. So that means we don't actually need these ones. Holding F5 and shift oh somebody doing a push-up yes oh that's right penny bring it back to life push up gang gang you'll be happy to know penny i've uh, i've graduated to doing push-ups with wait pull-ups with one resistance band instead of two i'm getting there so if we put my loop on now and take a quick look we'll see what we've got i have no idea what it's going to be oh we've got a little bit of a boop but I can change the timing and the spacing now. I probably want this to hold and then for it to do its thing and then for it to hold at the end. So now if we take a look, we've got a hold and then it bounces up. Ah, yes. Now we know smears should only be on screen for one second. So we'd make that shorter. But now you can see we're able to really take control and see what the animation's supposed to be without actually putting in too much work. So that means once we get the timing and the spacing and the gestures right, then you can take a look at this, do it again, but make a rough that actually is more detailed and all of that jazz. Some of these, we could probably do them on ones as well. Let's take a look. What happens if we do these ones on ones too before we close out? kind of nicer when it was a little bit slower but again the freedom that you get when you uh, don't put too much stress on yourself with the animation and the work things okay wow. good job everybody i hope we had fun today as always you've got homework though so don't leave just yet what is our homework the conclusion your homework is to complete the mini games and use 360 or thumbnailing on an animation of your own. Now, even though animation 201 season is coming to a close, don't worry, Ahem. there's some more things coming for you very, very, very soon. I hear graduation bells. I hear them ringing. So get ready, more stuff, more animation things are coming. Hmm. Thank you so much, Uma. We can do it. We can do it. Yes. Now, we do have more streams on Adobe Live coming up. So please do stay tuned. Grab some water. Stretch your legs. Flex those fingers because we are learning some more wonderful things to take your content to a whole new level. Also, yes, you have graduated. Congratulations.
Thank you, Lissandra, Penny, Uma, Val, Easy, Spawn, everybody that popped in today. You have made Animation 201 awesome.